you know, I've been doing my channel for a while and I don't usually talk about Linux malware, mostly because Linux malware isn't a huge thing right now. Uh, but that seems to be changing over the last few years. Uh, more and more um, Linux malware has been cropping up. Fact is, I, I don't really talk about Linux malware that much because it's not super interesting to me, uh, except this one. Somehow this newly discovered malware is three years old, targets Linux machines, and has avoided widespread de detection. That's just crazy to me. So let's talk about this. Now, this malware is dubbed Rota Jikiro. It was given that name by the researchers who discovered it, uh, NetLab 360. And according to them, this malware has been targeting 64-bit Linux machines since 2018. On March 25th, Rota Jakiro was detected by one of NetLab's uh, network uh, botnet tracking tools called uh, Botmon. And Botmon flagged this uh, software as suspicious. There had been no uh, previous detections of this uh, malware on VirusTotal. Um, at least for this specific file, uh, although there had been four separate samples that were uploaded or, or submitted to VirusTotal, uh, two of them in 2018, one last year, and one at the beginning of this year. Uh, Rota Jakiro actually uses some rather sophisticated uh, encryption techniques for, for malware in order to avoid detection. First, it uses uh, Zlib compression and then combines that with both AES and XOR encryption. Uh, it also rotates its keys quite frequently in order to obfuscate its communication with its C2 or command and control server. Now, while NetLab and other researchers are currently studying this malware, the team says that they're not exactly sure what the true purpose of uh, Rota Jakiro is beyond just compromising Linux machines. After reverse engineering the malware, researchers found uh, about 12 functions that the software has built into it. Rota Jakiro seems uh, capable of exfiltrating data, uh, plugin management, file handling, and device specific reporting. Even though we have uh, some insight into what Rota Jakiro does and how it behaves, uh, the team says that there's quite a, a lack of visibility into the plugin system. Uh, NetLab described the malware thusly, quote, at a coding level, Rota Jakiro uses techniques such as dynamic AES, double layer encryption communication protocols to counteract the binary and network traffic analysis. And at a functional level, Rota Jakiro first determines whether uh, the user is root or non-root at runtime with different execution policies for different accounts, and then decrypts the uh, relevant sensitive resources using AES and rotate for subsequent persistence. Process guarding and single instance use and finally establishes communication with C2 and waits for the execution of commands issued by C2. Yeah, it behaves differently depending on its privileges, uh, which might not be surprising to some people. In non-root scenarios, it will actually spawn two instances of itself, which uh, are used to bootstrap each other if one uh, actually fails or is closed by a user. In a root context, the malware is actually going to write itself into configuration files to maintain persistence. Now, the researchers have speculated that uh, Rota Jakiro might actually be part of an IoT botnet called Tori, uh, which basically weaponizes uh, your uh, smart crockpot, which for some reason connects to Wi-Fi. Yet again, proving that IoT is not just dumb, but also a security nightmare. Um, but that's all we have to go on at this point. I would absolutely love to know what you guys think of this one. Uh, hit me up in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Um, I think that's going to do it for now, though. I want to say thank you to all of the awesome people over on Patreon and who have become a YouTube member, uh, without whom I would not be able to do this. So thanks, guys. It really means the world to me. Uh, if you believe in the work that I do uh, and you want to help support the show, you can become a, a channel member here on YouTube or you can become a patron on Patreon. There are links down below. Uh, but no matter what you do, whether you support the show or not, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a blessed day.